I've heard dozens of horror stories about dangers of dating online. Whether that be looking for love or looking for something a little more casual, we'll say. I never cared much about the warnings, though. Since my identity is hidden behind this computer screen, I have no problem admitting that I've been an avid user of a certain dating app for a long time, and the app that I'm referring to is Tinder. I've used this app for years, meeting women and going on a ton of dates. I'm also upfront and honest with the women I match with on Tinder. I tell them what I'm looking for, and if they're looking for something more serious than me, no hard feelings, and we end our conversation. A couple of months back, I had my first real scare with the app. I got lazy and didn't care as much about being careful who I met. I matched with a beautiful girl named Teresa. She reached out to me before I could even message her. Right away the conversation turned in the direction that, let's just say, I was looking for. Teresa didn't pull any punches. She was upfront and to the point and I liked that about her. I eventually asked her if she wanted to come over and hang out and that's when her tone finally changed. In so many words, she basically said that she didn't want to leave her house because her dog was sick and she wanted to stay with her dog. Then she said that she was embarrassed to have me come over because she doesn't live in a great area. I assured her that I didn't care where she lived and that I didn't mind at all coming over to her place. She seemed flattered and agreed to have me come over. Then she dropped a new wrinkle into the operation, you see. She said that she lived with her aunt and that if I was going to come over... I needed to come over tonight when her aunt wasn't going to be home. I should have seen all these stipulations, but I didn't. I was just excited to hang out with her, and I agreed to come over that night and ask for the address. She told me that I had to wait an hour and then I could come. What was weird, but I didn't realize at the time, was that she didn't send me the address right away. After she said to come over in an hour, she never responded. I asked for the address twice and I never got a response. About an hour later, she finally responded with the address and told me to message her when I got there. She said something about the door being stupid or something and that it would just be easier for her to come outside and get me. I put the address into my phone and made the 20-minute drive to her house. She wasn't kidding about the area. It was a street of just old, broken-down houses. Garbage was everywhere and there was one street light that worked for the entire street. When I stopped the car on the road, I messaged her right away, and while I was waiting for a response, I noticed none of the houses had any lights whatsoever coming from them. Most of them were boarded up and seemed to look abandoned. And then it dawned on me. I didn't even see numbers on the houses. I had no clue which house belonged to Teresa. She messaged me back, I see you, with a smiling face emoji. I scanned the area from inside my car and didn't see anybody, and I messaged back, can you come outside? I have no idea what house is yours. A moment later, I saw some figure come to the door of the house across the street. I couldn't see their face, but they were waving at me. I messaged her and said, Is that you in the black sweatshirt? I didn't see her message back to me, but I received a message back almost instantly that said, Yeah, it's cold in here. Hopefully I'll be warmer soon. And she added a wink face emoji. I turned my car off and started to get out. I saw that she wasn't standing where she was just a moment ago, and I slowly started making my way across the street, and as I approached the front door, two guys emerged from the driveway. I instantly threw my hands up in self-defense, but it was no use. Before I could even react, one of the men was hitting me with a bat or something like that. The other guy was just kicking me while I was down. The person inside, who I thought was Teresa, then ran outside. And not only was it not Teresa, but it was a huge dude. He grabbed my wallet out of my pocket, and the three men ran down the road into the darkness. Thankfully, I left my phone in my locked car, and these guys didn't steal my keys for some reason. I was able to crawl to the car, and dialed the authorities and told them what happened. Never in my life had I felt so disoriented. Eventually, the one officer basically said that he couldn't do anything. The profile on Tinder was already deleted and since I didn't really get a good look at any of them, there was no way that I could identify them. And the only thing that sucked about losing my wallet was replacing my ID at that time. The joke was on them though, since they pretty much robbed a broke man. I think I had $4 in cash in my wallet and my debit card had virtually no money on it. And I cancelled my card and 
went to the ER that night. Turns out, I had two broken ribs, and I think all things considered, I was lucky that's all I walked away with during this complete nightmare. I do think about that night all the time. I can't believe how stupid I was. I had tons of red flags in front of me, and I ignored all of them for some fake girl. It makes me angry that these monsters are still out there, probably tricking idiots like me into similar situations. I wish that I could say that I learned my lesson about Tinder and meeting people online, but I didn't. I'm still out there meeting new people. I'm just extra careful now and using my head more since you can never be too careful when it comes to online dating. About two years ago, maybe a little bit more, I got out of a long-term relationship. Being that I'm the shy type, I wasn't good at asking girls out, and for some reason, it gave me crippling anxiety. I'm not sure if it was the fear of rejection or the embarrassment of my peers, but either way, dating was not my strong suit. When I met my ex, Tinder was just becoming a thing, so I never used the app, and now that I was single, I had a chance to try it for myself. I must admit, I was excited. I know a lot of my friends have had success on Tinder and various other dating platforms. I had the app for a few months and nothing exciting happened. I did meet one girl at the park, but that date lasted all of like 20 minutes. She got the classic phone call move saying that she had gotten called into work, and then I never heard from her again. I was just about to consider the Tinder experiment a failure, and then I matched with Danielle. Danny for short. She was beautiful. I half expected that I was being played actually. At one point I thought for sure that this girl was going to be a 50 year old dude or something but I continued to talk to her anyway. We agreed to meet at the local park in our area. And the park is a beautiful place. There's a big lake in the middle and massive series of trails that go all around the lake. And we agreed to meet at 5pm when we both got out of work. I showed up at 4 just because I was nervous and waited around until I got her message. A little after 5, she messaged saying that she was walking to the pavilion where all the picnic tables were. I messaged back and told her that I was heading that way as well. I was beyond happy when I walked up to the pavilion and sitting right in front of me was Danny. The same Danny from Tinder and not a 50 year old man. I sat down and we talked for a while. She had this way of calming me down and telling me to not be so nervous. Whatever she was saying and doing, it worked. I was head over heels for this girl already and I thought that I may have been doing a good job on the date since it had been a few hours and she hadn't left yet. We decided to go for a walk on one of the trails even though it was starting to get dark out. Ordinarily, I would have never agreed to do this but I felt alright with Danny for some reason. I reached for her hand at one point and... I nearly melted when she allowed me to hold her hand, and for the first time in a while, I felt something special. We walked for a long time until it was dark. She suggested that we should turn around and start making our way back to the cars, since we had no idea how much longer this trail went for, and it was almost pitch black on the trail. The walk back was nice for a while. Danny was holding my hand and cuddling up against my arm. We weren't far from the lot when I noticed somebody standing in the walkway. I could barely see him, and if it wasn't for the faint light of the moon shining through the trees, I probably would have missed him. I stopped abruptly and asked Danny if she could see him, and she said that she could. She shouted and asked the guy if he needed anything, and the person just stood there. I was terrified, but I didn't want to seem too scared in front of Danny. I just suggested that we move, and that it was probably just some fool trying to play some joke on us. She agreed, and we slowly continued walking toward the person. As they became more visible, it was becoming more scary, as the figure hadn't budged an inch, and now we could clearly see that he was concealing something behind his back. When we were about ten feet away, the man finally moved his hands from behind his back, and in his hand appeared to be a knife. But I wasn't sure, and in a low and rough voice, the man said, Turn around and put your hands above your head. I had no idea what to do. Danny, being the little spitfire that she is, started to argue with the man, and before I could even realize what was happening, she charged right into the guy, knocking him over. 
and she shouted for me to run, so I did. I could hear the man running after me as we made our way off the trail. We both ran to her car. She got into the passenger seat and we drove off. I could see the man in the parking lot as we were departing from the park. Along with my car, there were three other cars in the parking lot which made me think, was this guy alone or were there more people in danger in that park? When we were a safe distance away, we decided to call the police and report what had happened. The man was long gone and the only car in the lot when the police arrived was my vehicle. I remember having the thought at one point that Danny was setting me up, but thankfully after her apparent heroic action, that thought was put to bed. After that horrifying interaction, we went to a late night diner and just stayed up all night talking. It was like that event brought us together closer for some reason, and in a lot of ways I have mixed feelings about Tinder. The app almost got me killed, but I also met Danny there, and now she's my fiance. Whenever we tell people how we met, it's always fun to watch the reaction of people when we tell them that we met on Tinder and almost died on our first date. I still can't believe what she did that night and that we were able to actually get out of there unharmed. It just goes to show you that sometimes good things can come out of the bad. Due to the nature of my job, I never found a serious relationship. I've had some semi-serious flings, but nothing that lasts more than a few months. It's one of the few things about my job I don't like. While I'm still somewhat young, I'm using this job to travel and see the world. In the three years that I've worked here, I've seen just about every major landmark in the United States, and I've even got to visit some other countries. I'm just now getting to the point in my life, though, where I'm trying to settle down. Or maybe I'm just lonely, I don't know. But a few weeks ago, I had to travel to the other side of the country for work. The city that I was staying in was fairly large, and I figured since I was going to be staying there for a week, maybe I can try and find some companionship. A friend of mine told me to check out Tinder. I must have been out of touch because I thought Tinder worked for your hometown and I didn't realize that it was based on your current location. I set up my app and started swiping as they say. I worked all day and that afternoon when I checked my app I was surprised to see how many matches I actually had. Since it was early enough in the evening I decided to try my luck and see if I could get someone to go out and get a drink with me. The first few conversations failed miserably. I then messaged Jen. She seemed like a free spirit and someone I wouldn't mind hanging out with. After a few minutes, I asked her if she wanted to go grab a drink, and she was totally down. We agreed to meet at 8.30 at some local bar. I talked to one of my friends before meeting her, and he joked around for me to be careful meeting women online. We both laughed, and I was honestly putting zero stock into this. I was just looking for some company, and then, who knows, if we clicked, maybe we could hang out again. I arrived a few minutes early, and by chance, she was arriving at the same time. We both embraced awkwardly outside the bar, had a quick chuckle about it, and made our way inside for a drink. The first thing I was happy about was that the woman here was the exact same woman in the Tinder profile. I feel like I hear stories all the time of people getting played or catfished or whatever, so it was nice to see the woman that I actually thought I was talking to. Now a few hours into our date, we were getting along very well. We were making each other laugh, and I don't know, it just felt good. All of it felt good. A few drinks in, and she started to give me those friendly touches on the arm, or on the hand. It was something about those soft and delicate touches that made me feel comfortable and that this was evolving into maybe something. I had to keep reminding myself that I didn't live here, though, and telling myself that I can't fall too deep for this girl. I think it's worth noting that at this point of the night I had zero doubts and zero red flags about this person, Jen, and close to midnight, she leaned over and kissed me on the cheek. As I smiled, she leaned in and whispered softly, we should go back to your place. I could feel my heart racing, and I'm not going to lie, this is what I wanted. I nodded and we caught an Uber back to my Airbnb, and before heading inside, she paused. I asked if she was okay and she said in an embarrassed voice, I'll meet you inside. I, I don't want you to see me, but I smoke. I'm embarrassed by it. I'm, I'm trying to quit, but it's a process. I assured her that I didn't care, but she was persistent that I didn't see her smoke. 
Not wanting to upset her, I went inside and started getting changed into some comfortable clothes. A few minutes went by and I noticed that she still wasn't inside. I went and looked out the front window and she was nowhere to be found. I stepped outside and shouted her name a few times and there was no response. The house that I was renting had this small wraparound porch in the front of the house. On the porch was a bench and I sat down on the bench and messaged Jen on the Tinder app. While I was waiting for her to respond, I was starting to get kind of nervous. After all, I didn't know this area and I started to think maybe it wasn't a safe neighborhood to be in. And the thoughts of something horrible happening to Jen started to flood my mind. And then I heard some commotion coming from the house. I turned around and looked through the window into my rented house. There she was, clear as day. Jen and two other random dudes. They seemed to be sneaking around my house. I just instantly, instinctually, ducked down. I could see Jen whispering something to them, but I couldn't hear what it was through the thick walls. I saw her pull out her phone and she started to text. Seconds later, I got a message on Tinder from her saying, Hey, where'd you go? I'm inside and I can't find you. I didn't respond. Jen and one of the guys stood in the living room, looking constantly around and over their shoulders. The other guy was not in view, which made me really nervous. Now, I should have called the police right there and then, but in the moment, I couldn't think straight at all. I was still trying to put puzzle pieces together in my head, and after a minute or two, I saw the other guy, whom I couldn't see a moment ago, carrying some bag of some kind, and it looked pretty full. I finally realized what was happening. I was pretty sure that I was getting robbed, or at least the house that I was staying at was getting robbed. I saw the man with the bag head over to my laptop which was on the desk in the living room, and my entire life was on that laptop. I watched him follow the wire from the back of the wall and then he unplugged it. I couldn't let him steal that. I messaged Jen back and said that I called the police and they'll be here in less than 30 seconds. Obviously, that was a lie. I hadn't even called them yet, but I wanted to see her react. She screamed at them, saying that they had to go or something, and then the three of them ran out of the front door, running directly by me. Thankfully, they couldn't see that I was crouching over in the corner behind the bench. I just sprinted inside and saw my laptop was still there. My wallet was also right next to the laptop, which contained all my credit cards and about $500 in cash, and luckily for me, this thief was either an idiot or completely blind. I did call the police, and I told them everything that happened, and no surprise, that Jen person was completely fake. We contacted the owners and had tried to figure out what they stole, and it didn't look to be anything too valuable. Maybe some random pieces of art, I guess, or silverware, I don't even know, but they were just from Home Goods or TJ Maxx or something. There weren't any valuable things, and I stayed at a hotel for the rest of my stay, and I completely deleted my Tinder account, obviously. What disturbs me is that this woman is still out there, tricking people into letting her into their homes and robbing them. My sincere hope is that I never see Jen again, and that I never have to return to that city for work, or any other reason. The story I'm about to share takes place approximately six to seven years ago. I had recently gotten out of a long-term relationship and moved back to my hometown with a buddy of mine who was living by himself in a house that he recently bought. He had plenty of space and gave me a great deal on rent. I remember being very appreciative of the offer just because so much in my life had changed. I had gotten out of a relationship, started a new job, and would now be in the process of moving. Now living with my friend Calvin, we'll call him, was fun right off the bat. I think the first night after I officially moved in we cracked open a bottle and just had some drinks while we were cooking dinner. I'm not normally a big drinker but I remember being hung over the next day at the job that I had just started not more than a week prior. But anyway, all of my single friends were on Tinder and trying to convince me to join. I wasn't much into social media and the thought of meeting someone randomly on an app did not seem very appealing. Also, the stories that they would tell me about their interactions and encounters certainly didn't make it any more enticing for me to join. I decided to hard pass on downloading Tinder and was actually looking forward to being single for the first time in a while. 
It wasn't out of the ordinary for Calvin and I to have people over at the house on the weekends. We never really had parties, but usually would have about five or six people over if there was nothing else going on. I remember one night specifically we had more than just a few people over. Each person we invited brought a friend or two. A few people at the house asked if they could set up a table to play beer pong. We didn't care and let everyone have at it. One of my really good friends, Kelsey, came over that night to see the new place and just hang out. We hadn't seen each other in at least a year and I was excited to see what was new with her. We sat on the couch and talked for at least 45 minutes, updating each other about our families and what was new in our lives. I grabbed us both a drink and sat back down and she said, I saw you took the plunge, eh? I looked at her confused and said, what? She smiled and responded, Tinder, I came across your profile. I didn't swipe right because I didn't want to be weird, but you could have picked pictures with better resolution. Ugh, very funny, I said, and she looked at me kind of confused as I told her that I wasn't on Tinder. And she says, well, if you're really not on Tinder, someone's using your name and pictures on there. I didn't read the profile, but it was definitely you, and it was definitely your name. I looked at her, dumbfounded, and said, Uh, well, that's pretty creepy. Do you think you could find it again? She wasn't sure, and she shouted for her friend and said, Hey, Kristen, come here. C can you get on Tinder and just... Can you just keep scrolling till you find him? Uh, maybe try and limit it to, like, local or something so it's not, many, not as many counts show up? Kristen knew what was going on and gave the thumbs up and went back over to the pong table. We moved on with our conversation and switched to updating the playlist that was playing on the speakers at the party. In the middle of a big laugh about one of the songs that we chose, Kristen came over and said, I think this is you, buddy. It was me. She had matched with my fake Tinder profile. I asked her to scroll through the photos and there was one really old photo from when I had Facebook and a couple of pictures from my Instagram account that I had not posted something new on at least a few years. The profile did have my name, but there wasn't really anything in the bio. I honestly don't recall if it even said anything. I asked Kristen if she could message them and ask them for their number. She did, and the person responded right away. Instead of providing a number, they sent her to go to an Instagram account. I asked her to send it to me so Kelsey and I could see what the Instagram was. I figured it was going to be one of those Instagram accounts that said for only $4.99 we would give you 10,000 followers or something insane like that, but when we got to the Instagram account, which was not private, the profile picture was a picture of my face and had my full name. And this is when I started to get a little angry and pretty concerned. I immediately went to message the account and said something along the lines of stop using my name in photos. I told the account that I had come across this page as well as that a Tinder account and I'll be reporting it to the police if it's not taken down. We waited ten minutes or so and there was no response. I put my phone away and said let's go sign up for beer pong and the rest of the night was relatively uneventful. A couple of friends crashed on the couch and we cleaned up a little bit before deciding that we would save the rest for the morning. I remember putting on Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors as I cleaned up my room and got ready for bed. Even though it was late in the night, I wasn't feeling tired, but as soon as I got into bed and turned on my fan, I passed out instantly, and that was until about 3am or so. My phone buzzed loudly. I usually keep my phone on silent or do not disturb, but I must have completely forgotten, and it was an Instagram notification. It was from the fake account, and it was just a smiley face. Not an emoji, literally the colon and parentheses. Even though I was half asleep, I typed back demanding again that they delete the account and stop using my name in photos. I must have fallen back asleep because when I woke up in the morning, I had another response, and it said, Anything for you. Very creeped out and annoyed, I noticed that the account didn't have my profile picture anymore, it was just a black circle and my name had been removed from the profile. Finally, I thought it was the end of this annoying BS. The topic had honestly slipped my mind for a while and till the following weekend when I had the house to myself. I wasn't feeling great and wanted to stay in bed and relax. 
Calvin went out to a bar and restaurant downtown with a group of friends. I was in bed watching TV and I got another alert on my phone. It was another Instagram message. It was from the same account and it said, I know where you are. Smiley face. I looked at the message trying to think of what to type back. And before I could respond, an image came into the chat. It was a picture. And it was the outside of Calvin's house. It looked like it from across the street, but it was hard to tell exactly where it was from because the only light was street lights. I got out of bed and made sure all the lights were off and that the doors and windows were locked, which thankfully were. I didn't respond to the message, I don't know why. Honestly, it was probably because I was terrified and I didn't want to have a confrontation. If someone really was outside, I didn't want them any closer to the house. I sat there in silence with just my TV screen on and the volume on mute. I was really anxious and just hoping that I wouldn't hear anything else, and I didn't. Well, for a few hours, that is. I think it was two or three hours later when I felt another buzz from my phone. This time it said, I know where you sleep. Smiley face. My heart sank. I had a baseball bat under my bed and I grabbed it. My phone lit up again and it was a picture of a window. It was impossible to make out where it was, but I think they were trying to insinuate that they were outside my window. I grabbed the bat, slung open the back door and screamed that if you come anywhere near this house, our dog will tear you to shreds and the cops are on their way. I slammed the door shut and locked it, terrified that I even went outside. Also, we didn't have a dog, but thought that that might deter someone if they actually were outside. About 15 minutes later, I heard rattling at the front door and the door swung open. As I decided if I was going to take a swing with the bat, Calvin said, What are you doing? I explained the entire thing to him, and after debating if we should call the cops, we decided to just block the account and see if anything else happened. Thankfully, nothing ever came of the incident. I didn't receive any other messages or have any other friends tell me that they found fake profiles of me. I know you're probably thinking that that was my last experience with Tinder, well... You're wrong. About six months later, I did rejoin Tinder, and I have a bunch of different stories for a different day, but thankfully, this is my worst experience using the app. It seems that during the time that we live in, my generation is a generation of online dating. I remember being in high school, and online dating was something that losers did. It was for people who couldn't get dates in the real world, I thought. When I was in college, not only was that previous statement incorrect, but it was the primary way my generation met people for dates and various other activities. I was even a frequent user of dating apps by my mid-twenties. My favorite one to use was Tinder, obviously. I just found that most of the time on the app I found people that were into going out, grabbing a drink, and just hanging out. One of my more unique stories from meeting people on Tinder was the night that I met Felicia, and that chick was awesome. We started messaging earlier in the day and we agreed to hit up one of the bars near her house that night. We met up and started vibing right away. As the night progressed, I saw her expression and mood instantly change. Getting to the point where I couldn't ignore it anymore, I asked her if she was alright and she said in a whisper I could barely hear, You see that guy with the Yankees hat across the bar? That's my ex's best friend. He's been staring over here for the last hour. My ex is... Well... He isn't a good guy. I'm sure he's probably texted him and I'm just nervous about him showing up. I didn't care about her ex. I've dealt with crazy exes before and I assured her that I was okay and that I could take care of myself. She gave me kind of a half smile and asked if we could leave. Of course, I agreed, and we decided that we could go back to my place for the night. On our way out the door, her ex's friend confronted us. Not even acknowledging my existence, he looked right at Felicia and said, Hey, can't say hi to me? And you're leaving already? Well, that's crazy. Why don't you just come back in and just buy me a drink, huh? She said no thank you pretty politely, and he started begging like a child. Come on, just one drink. Before she could answer, I stepped in front and extended my hand and introduced myself. He laughed, looked right past me at Felicia and said, Really? And then walked away laughing. 
Ordinarily, that would make me mad, but I let it go since I could see how much this interaction bothered her. We finally went back to my place and nothing crazy happened. We actually played Mario Party on the Nintendo Switch and had a couple more drinks and fell asleep on the couch together. When we woke up, we both were happy and agreed to see each other again. I watched that happiness disappear from her face when she looked at her phone. She had a message from a friend of hers that was at the bar that night and apparently, not long after we left, her ex showed up at that bar. She started to apologize to me again and told me that she understood if I didn't want to see her again because of this craziness and I reassured her that I'm not scared of any ex-boyfriends. We went on a few more dates and never went back to that bar specifically. And the rest of our dates had been to outdoor places like parks and beaches and she started staying over at my house a few nights a week. I was kind of starting to fall for this girl and I believe that she was starting to fall for me as well. I remember asking her if she wanted to stay at her place one night and she just said something along the lines of she had too many roommates or something and we wouldn't have any privacy. It worked for me because I'd rather stay home anyway. One Saturday night, a few weeks removed from the bar incident, Felicia stayed over at my house. It was a great night as always and we got into bed to pass out at around midnight. I'm not sure how much longer it had been but I woke up to Felicia screaming on the phone. Her ex called her, and apparently was freaking out on the other side. I couldn't hear what he was saying, but I could hear his tone on the phone, and he was definitely hollering. She hung up the phone in a rage and threw it across the room. I had to hold her and try to calm her down, and eventually she did start to calm down, and we just laid down in bed together. As we were laying there together, we heard the sound of two car doors shut right outside the house. She started to repeatedly yell the word no as she gripped the blanket. I ran to the top of the stairs, which has a window that overlooks the driveway. I could see a large man in a Yankees hat and another large man with a short, almost buzzed haircut. When they got closer, I could clearly tell the one guy was the guy from the bar. I asked her if her ex had a buzz cut and she said yes and that we needed to go right now. I wasn't about to back down. These two guys didn't even try knocking. They both started just kicking the door in an attempt to break it down. Felicia ran to the door and begged them to stop, but they didn't. Then she did something that I'll never understand. She unlocked the door, allowing these two absolute maniacs to barge into my home. Once I saw them run inside, I just hid in the closet. I'm a strong guy, but I'm not about to win a fight against two dudes way bigger than me. Her ex started freaking out instantly, demanding that I show myself. I could hear her saying, please, just let's go home, I'm so sorry, I'll never do this again. I couldn't see, but from what I could hear, it sounded like he was ignoring her because he kept just shouting for me. I could hear things banging and smashing downstairs and Felicia just kept yelling for him to stop. After a couple of minutes, they left and I heard him shout one last time that this isn't over yet, bro. I heard the car drive off and when I left the closet and went downstairs... I saw that they had destroyed my living room. I sat on the couch and contemplated calling the police, but I started to think about what she said. She said, let's go home, and I'll never do this again. And then the wheels started turning in my head. Was this girl in an active relationship? Was I the other man? I didn't have any social media at the time because I found it extremely distracting, and I had one of my friends look Felicia up, and I couldn't believe my eyes. Not only was she in a relationship, but she was also married to this dude. I felt terrible. I found his name on Facebook and I sent him a private message from my friend's account and told him that it was me messaging him from this account and I apologized and told him that I had no idea and if I had known that she was married, I would have never continued talking to her. Believe it or not, he actually went on to accept my apology and he also apologized for being an absolute loon. He agreed to pay for any damage to my house and I agreed to never talk to Felicia again and I never did. I blocked her number and I don't even know if she tried to reach out to me again. I definitely think this dude overreacted, but I'll be honest, I get it. Sometimes heartbreak makes you do some wild things and someone told me that he saw them out together recently so maybe they did fix their marriage. It's just crazy to me that so many signs were in front of my face and I was blind to them. 
He worked overnights, which is why I was able to spend so many nights with her. She did an excellent job of convincing me that this guy was her ex. But my advice to anyone out there using Tinder, or really any dating service, just be careful. People do have agendas, and they do have baggage. You may be just having a good time, you know? But the person you're with may be doing something much shadier than you expect. By 2022, I had my fair share of Tinder dates, some great ones and some that I'd rather never think about again. Around that time, I was just trying to casually meet people and wasn't looking for anything serious. I ended up matching with a guy named Kyle. He seemed alright when we were chatting and I figured that I would let him take me out. We went and grabbed a drink at a local bar and I had a nice night. We talked, laughed and agreed that we would see each other again soon. That night we were texting back and forth and trying to figure out a plan to see each other again. I agreed to a dinner date next Sunday and maybe some drinks after, depending on how late it got. He tried to get me to go to some party on Saturday night, but unfortunately I had to work and wasn't into getting ready and going out after work. At the time, I was a waitress at a restaurant that was open until midnight on weekends and we were busy right up until that point usually. He seemed cool with it and we agreed on the Sunday night date. Throughout the week, we messaged back and forth on the Tinder app. I'm not sure why we never actually exchanged actual numbers, but this was alright with me. Saturday arrived, and I was receiving messages all afternoon saying things like he was going to miss me tonight and that he wished I could go. That night at around 8.30, the hostess came to me and said that she just sat me a table of six that requested me as their server. Curious, I looked over the ledge, and I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Kyle, with five of his friends. I was happy to see him, but a part of me wished that he would have told me that he was coming. I don't really like being blindsided, but I appreciated the effort. I came over, and right away his friends were acting like teenage boys, even though we were all well in our mid-twenties. They were howling and just being idiots. Kyle apologized, and I just shrugged it off. Anybody who has ever been a waitress knows that you will always deal with stupid people. It's unfortunately part of the job. It seemed like every two minutes the table was calling me over for something. Most of the time it was for stupid questions on Kyle's behalf, and once I was officially annoyed, Kyle called me over and asked if I would please reconsider and go to the party with him. I didn't want to go at all, and after tonight I was kind of all done with Kyle, you know, but I did something that was probably a little mean just to see if he would do it. In front of all of his friends, I told him to get on his hands and knees in the restaurant and begged me to go, and if he was sincere, I would go. His friends erupted in cheers and laughter. He had no choice now. He had to do it, and to his credit, he got down there and sincerely begged me to go. While his friends were dying of laughter, I told him that I would go after work, but the only condition was, was that I was going to drive myself because I didn't know what time that I was getting out and I needed to go home first no matter what. He agreed and told me to message him when I was close. I wasn't thrilled about going, but I told myself that I could use a fun time out. I worked the rest of the shift and I was able to leave right at midnight, which was nice. I drove home quickly, got dressed, and then asked Kyle to send me the address. He messaged me back right away, gave me the address, and sent me a kiss face emoji. The party was 36 minutes from my house, which really annoyed me since I wouldn't get there until nearly 1am. When I was close, I realized that we still hadn't exchanged numbers, so I couldn't call him. Wherever I was, it was pitch black, and it was seemingly in the middle of nowhere. I finally pulled up to a small farmhouse and all the lights were off. I sat in my car for a minute and messaged Kyle a few times. Finally, he answered and said that he would come out and get me. He said the party was in the back of the barn. A minute later, he emerged from behind the house, wobbling around and he was clearly messed up by the time I got there. He could barely form complete sentences. I was about to get in my car and drive home, which I should have, but since I had taken all the time to drive out here, I figured that I would at least see what the party's all about. Kyle put his arm around me and was sort of guiding me behind the house, and not far from the back of the house was a decent-sized barn, and I could see lights coming from the open door. 
We made our way into the barn and I instantly regretted my decision. Inside were two guys I didn't recognize. These were two older men, easily in their 40s or 50s. All the guys he was with at the restaurant were nowhere to be found. There were no girls, no music, no food, no anything. It was just me, Kyle, and these two sketchy dudes. I wasn't about to take any chances. I looked to Kyle and said I'm leaving and that I'd talk to him tomorrow. In a straight and serious voice, Kyle said, No, you're not. You're not leaving. And he wasn't mumbling anymore. It almost seemed like it was all an act to get me to walk behind the barn. I turned around, and one of the guys was behind me, and the other was next to the barn doors. You see, I always keep pepper spray on this keychain that I had, and I had no regrets. As I sprayed the older guy, I made a dash for the barn door. Luckily, I was able to get out before the other guy was able to shut the door, and while I was running to my car, I could hear Kyle screaming my name and begging me to come back. This time, I was smart, and I just kept driving. I drove past my house and parked at a 24-hour gas station. I went through our entire Tinder conversation to see if I ever told him where I lived, and thankfully, I never shared that information. I never went home that night and drove to my parents' house and crashed on the couch. The next day I told my parents about what had happened. We alerted the authorities just to see if there was anything that could be done. The Tinder account was deactivated and since I never had a phone number or anything, I couldn't give the police any information and since nothing physically happened to me, they didn't seem all too interested. I guess they did check out that farm but they found nothing suspicious other than an elderly man who lived on the farm. And to this day, I never had seen that Kyle or any of his friends again. I don't know what was going to happen, and I don't know if anything would have even happened, and I often go back to that night mentally and try to see if I was misremembering anything. But I remember it as if though it happened yesterday. I'll never have any answers as to what Kyle intended, and I'll always be left with the memory of that nightmare. About a year ago, when I became single for the first time in years, I was reluctant to get back into the dating scene. I felt tired of the thought of dating and getting back out there, as they always say. A friend of mine suggested that I just check out Tinder. At first, it was an easy pass for me. I know what kind of men are on Tinder and I definitely wasn't looking for that. However, I did let the idea marinate for a little while. I found out that one of my coworkers that became a close friend found her husband on Tinder and she told me that not everyone in Tinder is gross, you just need to take some chances. So I finally created my Tinder account, added some cute pics, and waited. I got some hits on my profile after a while, and most guys were either pigs or they were as boring as watching paint dry. And just as I was about to call it quits on the dating app, I got a match with a guy named Ron. He was a good looking guy, and from what I could tell in his pictures, he seemed tall and in shape. Some of the pictures on his profile were of some basketball things, so I was able to see his height compared to others around him. He had shoulder-length brown hair and a beautiful smile. The smile was probably his best attribute. After we matched, he messaged me not long after. We made some small talk for a little while and then the conversation evolved. Before I knew it, I had been messaging this guy for a few hours. He finally asked me for my number and asked if we could go grab a cup of coffee or something. I was happy that he asked me to go get coffee and not a drink. I'm not a big drinker and I don't like bars very much. It just seemed like every match I had gotten before Ron wanted to take me out for a drink and it was refreshing to have someone offer something else. So we picked a date and time and I told him that I would meet him there since I would be in that part of town. That was a lie, but one of my friends told me to always have a getaway strategy on the first Tinder date just in case it goes sour. I showed up at the cafe a few minutes early and scanned the area. I didn't see him so I ordered my coffee and sat down by one of the windows. After about 15 minutes I was starting to feel like I was being stood up. I looked around and one minute prior I had a message from Ron asking where I was. I responded telling him that I was there and that I had been there for 15 minutes. I looked around the cafe and standing by the counter I saw a large and nearly balding man. 
I didn't recognize him when I initially looked around the cafe because this guy looked nothing like the pictures from his profile. I started to wave and that's when he noticed me. He flashed a smile and started to jog over to me, and as he jogged over I realized right away that this was the guy from the photos, it's just those photos must have been older. I knew because of that smile. As he pulled away from a very awkward hug, he noticed that I was drinking a coffee and he said in an annoyed voice, uh, is that a coffee? I smiled and laughed, telling him that I was more than capable of buying my own coffee. He just stared at my hand holding the coffee and said some stupid line about how he should have bought the coffee since he was taking me out. I told him not to worry about any of that and that I wasn't that type of girl. So even though this guy looked way different from his pictures, I wasn't going to judge that. He sat down and I was excited to actually talk to Ron in person and get to know this guy that I had vibed well with over messaging. Well, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I swear to you, he spent 90% of the day talking about how much money he has, how much money he makes, and when, not if, when we get married, I will never have to work another day in my life. I was polite enough to let the date go for about an hour or so and then I told him I had to leave and that I would be in touch. I'm sure he caught the vibe that I wasn't into this at all. He looked annoyed that I was ending the date. As we were walking to our cars, he said, You're not going to invite me over? I wanted to see that world famous golden retriever you always talk about. He giggled in a weird way and I just told him that we'll do that another day. And with a smile, I told him that I had a family dinner to get to and I needed to run. I got in my car without giving him a hug and when I looked in my mirror, I saw him standing in that same spot, just kind of watching me drive away. I'm not sure why, but at that moment, I felt very uneasy. That night, my friend Tess came over and I told her about the date and how he was just off from the start. She laughed and said that she would have probably done the same thing. Now around 11, I asked Tess if she would stay over at my house. I don't know why I couldn't shake that feeling of anxiety, but it got worse as the night carried on. She agreed and we both decided to stay in the living room like a sleepover. She passed out quickly, but I ended up wide awake on the couch just scrolling through my phone. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me at one point, but I had been so focused on my phone that I didn't even realize. There were lights shining into my living room window. Since I live on a moderately busy street, it's not that uncommon to see lights shining through the window as cars drive by, but these lights were not moving and were shining for several minutes now. I got up and made my way to the window and right before I pulled back the silk curtain, the lights went off. I looked quickly and the lights were not from the road, they were from my driveway. Right there, parked behind my car in the driveway, was some red pickup truck. I ducked down and peeked from the corner of the window trying to see if I could identify who the driver was. I figured that they must have been lost or something. And right at that moment, at 1.27am, I got a message from Ron saying, Are you kidding me? I had no idea what he was talking about. I didn't respond. Seconds later, the truck turned back on and pulled out of my driveway. As I watched the truck driving away, it clicked. I'd seen that truck before. I went back into Ron's Tinder profile and the last picture of him was standing next to a red pickup truck. I messaged him back a question mark and then asked if he was just at my house. No response at that moment and I never got another response from Ron again. I told Tess about it in the morning and she freaked out, claiming that I should have called the police. But I was scared and not thinking straight and I really didn't think the cops could do anything at this point. I mean, what if it was just a coincidence? I don't believe it was, but I also don't have 100% proof that it was him either. The reason I'm writing this story now is that I just started seeing someone new and coincidentally I started seeing a red pickup truck everywhere I go, but I can't seem to get a glimpse of the driver. A few nights back, I saw one parked across the street from my house the entire night. I haven't reported it yet, but I am close to acting. I tried reaching out to Ron one time and... I think that he has my number blocked or something. If anything happens, I'll update the story and share it with you, but until then, be careful meeting people online. You never know who are truly creeps. Hey friends, thanks for listening. 
Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. I release new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. EST. And there are super fun live streams every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday night. I'd love to see you there. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official, and maybe even hear your story featured in the next video. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations and bonus content over on Patreon, or click that big join button to hear about the extra perks offered for the channel. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all of these stories in big compilations and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. All links in the description below. Thanks so much, friends. And remember, never bring a knife to a pickle fight.